What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk about a news announcement that dropped just the other day. I wish they did this in Discord. I really dislike how they give us the news through Facebook and then don't announce it in Discord oftentimes. Um, I, I checked the, the Facebook every day or two days and, uh, you know, I, I just checked it earlier in the day yesterday and then I missed it because, you know, it was 17 hours ago. But here is what it looks like. Here's An Anpu, the bringer of death. By the way, such a cool looking character. Um, so so cool atlas type character by the way um and you can see him. it looks like an anubis right <laughs> very very interesting summon type character uh he's going to go ahead and summon the scale of justice to inflict huge damage on the enemies and detonate all soul guards on the battlefield let's guess what our skills here will have in the comments <clears throat> so he has imprisonment displacement and summon corpse explosions Better recruitment the new limited recruitment in the next update stay tuned now right now the um the date is all right, it is Monday, which means that the new update is going to be coming. I have a schedule for this, guys. Hold on, give me. Uh, it looks to be probably in a day or two, probably tomorrow, like late day or something like that. <laughs> um, we're gonna get a, a ton of new banners. Whenever this banner ends, you can see two days is probably when this guy is coming. Um, it said next update, and usually they do updates around this time. So I would suggest everyone save your limited summons now um because you're going to probably want to summon last time we had a summon character it was daniel and daniel is a game changer he is absolutely absurd so so powerful and this guy seems absolutely sick if you guys play like diablo or something when i see corpse explosion i instantly think necro i instantly think um you know characters that are going to be exploding with tons of damage reviving people and he has displacement as well as well which could be very good for pvp whenever i see a displacement type ability I'm, i immediately think pvp as well that's usually where those skills are super good in regardless guys this guy seems to be someone that you're going to want to summon for and i i actually just made a video which i will be putting out probably tomorrow talking about you guys picking my next immortal character and uh well i'm gonna put on poo in there i uh i know i said a different type of four i'm gonna release that video anyways but uh i uh i think i might change to, to determine whether or not i want to summon for this new um this new character and figure out whether or not he's good at immortal um obviously i will do a lower mythic level test of him because i like doing that kind of free to play test because i don't really spend I, have, I mean i haven't spent any money on my account right i'm um i have still have the recharge pack which <laughs> is just chilling there um but <clears throat> you know I, I like to test those lower mythic level um viability and see if they're worthwhile and so that's what i'll be doing but definitely definitely save your summons for this guy He's going to be, I'm very excited about this because for those of you that participate in the guild hunt, guild is honestly the thing that I'm working towards progressing the most along with PVP. As I've said over the multitude of videos recently, um, the major thing that you're going to want to focus on after you get past that early initial st clearing stage 15 of some of these dungeons, um, your, your, you know, your Disa Caves, your Terror Dome, your Insensara Marsh, after you get to stage 15, first off, Terror Dome only has limited viability because you're eventually going to max out your Divine Prototypes, right? Um, in fact, I actually just got one of my last Divine Prototypes that I needed, which is Flashpoint, one of the best prototypes in the game for healers. So sad that I finally got it. Um, and uh, i haven't had it before and i'm still working on obviously ascending them you can see i have some at max ascended like flowing rune pain rune up here is um uh, almost max uh the astral strike is actually i should actually just go ahead and, and max this out real quick that one's maxed so eventually these are going to be tarot dome is going to be useless so that's why i don't recommend putting energy into it um because well there's only limited viability for this stuff and eventually you're going to max it out especially with the construction blueprints you can't get the divine mythic prototypes i'm missing i think one epic one one epic one so eventually you're done with that right and for sansaro marsh you could still min max this with all the commanders uh, but i don't think that you're going to get as much value as just going to decent caves and honestly even decent caves you can't get that crazy of substats compared to a lot of other games out there um consider you can't really up your speed so like the gear isn't nearly as important as some other games even though it is still incredibly important and then of course ancient altar you know you, you eventually max it out right um eventually you can go ahead and get your summons every week and, and just easily be able to beat it which you know i'm able to go ahead and two key hell which is what i've been doing recently um so 
Uh, there's no reason for me to progress that. Basically, what I'm saying is all this other PvE content in the game is basically done, right? It's basically done. So therefore, what's next? Guild and PvP. PvP, the reason why I say that is because there's actually some really good rewards in the Summon Arena. Um, I personally ended up going and getting uh, in Group Stage 1, I believe. I ended up getting rank five, so I got some rewards here and I ended up getting the not advanced, so I got some summons there, but you can start to get triple S selection cards for Moriyami, um, I believe. Yeah, Moriyami um, here, which is gonna be a nice triple S for you just to gather up or res. Again, these are, and red runes, by the way, this is like the most end game thing. Very, very important you wanna go for that. And someone like Anpu here, with displacement and summons, I could see being a very, very, very good team alongside Daniel, Skewer, and the summon commander. That makes a very, very strong team because Daniel's actually pretty good in um, PvP as well because of his, you know, kind of destruction towards Crete. Um, if you get him against Crete, you're going to reduce that healing a ton, and it actually makes Crete very easy to take out from what I've noticed. So Anpu is going to be great for there, but then also, Again, as I mentioned earlier on, the thing that I'm more excited about is Guild. Guild has been my most enjoyable activity in this entire game, okay? I love min-maxing it. I, I actually, going through and doing the dungeons, I found the dungeons kind of boring, right? Like I started the game, the basic comp, you get your hunters, you're done. That's it, this is what your comp is. Or I'm using Daniel here um, just because I had him and uh, you know, I, I was testing him out and I never changed him out because I could beat it on auto. There, it's done, right? It's very simplistic. There's not really many mechanics. To be honest, there's not really many mechanics for a lot of PvE content in this game, but the guild, there's still more rewards to be had. There's still more min-maxing to be had. We were only on, I think, stage eight of 15. Right? I could still improve so much here and help not only myself, but the rest of my guild getting ready for guild versus guild coming soon and getting a massive upgrades, right? I love going for things in the game that give you massive value when you actually beat them. And guild is one of those things where I'm getting, you know, 28% crit damage. I'm getting 36% base attack, uh, or not base attack, but 36% extra attack off my base attack for my hunters. These things are massively, massively important, and I absolutely love going for it. I think it's very, very enjoyable to do so. So with Anpu, basically all that to say, Atlas, Anpu, one, great for the new, um, you know, faction or Atlas faction, and it's gonna be great for the soul mine because actually Atlas is one of my weaker factions because, well, I don't really have a great Atlas faction going on right now, but going in and getting him in the guild and running him against, for example, um, right now, I, I, I kind of a, a toss up between, I run Skur and Hattie, Daniel, Kalaza, Senway, but I drop Senway or Kalaza and put in Anpu, and if he's comparable to Daniel, which I'm not sure if he is, but if he is, he's going to almost quadruple Kalaza's damage or Senway's damage, uh, potentially even five or X, six X times that damage, which is what Daniel does, which is insane and can massively increase my damage for those guild bosses. And hopefully everyone else in the clan, a guild was gonna do the same thing. Again, assuming he's gonna be comparable to Daniel and we're gonna massively improve our guild weekly resources. So I'm very excited about that. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why you guys should be summoning for Anpu. Um, obviously, before you make any summon decision, I would wait till the end of the banner, okay? So before you guys summon and before we see the kit, wait till the end of the banner. If he comes out, don't summon immediately, one. Two, um, and I would recommend if you guys are free to play and you're unsure about summoning, wait a couple of days, again, till the end of the banner before, you know, Dan, myself, get a video out. And although they're not perfect tests, they're not absolutely 100% correct, they at least give you kind of an idea of what to expect. Therefore, you can kind of get in a, a little bit more of an informed decision if you're curious, because I like to do, I, I know Dan loves to go ahead and, and do those high immortal tests, which is great. I love watching him for that because I don't have a ton of summons um, like him. So it's before before I go and invest, you know, hundreds of summons into a character, I love to see that in Mortal Test. And then I myself like to do the mythic level tests or the low level tests um, to see if he's even worthwhile um, at that low level for you guys. So definitely recommend you guys check out those types of videos beforehand. Um, to let you know whether or not it would, you know, change your account. Again, they're not perfect, but any more information is a good thing, right? So that's what I wanted to mention about this character. Um, I, I don't know anything about him. All we know is, you know, the very brief kind of description of his abilities. We don't know what they're actually going to do yet. And so I'm excited for it. And I wanted to share that with all of you um, because again, I've been, uh, I've been kind of 
waddling around the game, kind of doing my dailies, doing my weeklies, and there isn't really much else to do besides that because we're at kind of the grind point of the game where we just have to sit back, relax, and get upgrading our guild, get upgrading our gear, getting our final, you know, Immortal Fives rolling, and getting just some more Hero XP so we can get towards that Hyper Evolution, which is what I've been kind of slowly making my way towards. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you're excited for Ampu again. Um, I'm very excited for it. This is like one of the coolest aesthetic characters in the game. Um, I personally like Skewered Hattie, is my favorite character in the game in terms of looks and kind of theme. Um, but I can certainly see Ampu becoming one of my favorites, if not my favorite, depending on how the animations go, how character looks in game and all that stuff. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below and I'll see you all tomorrow.